So uh, we're trying something new. We actually have a new employee that we are going to go through an interview. And if everything goes well, we will go ahead and probably hire him at the end. Uh, we are optimistic that this is uh, the lab tech that we've been looking for. And um, the stakes are high on this. So if this, if this goes south, <laughs> we'll just cut the recording off halfway through and they'll be like, ah, he didn't make it. Hopefully yeah, you'll fine. get to the, the final round and you're the winner. Okay, okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, so first off, um, I'm one of the owners. Me and Sean own it 50-50, right? We're a fragrance company. We make fragrances that go like in absolutely everything. Uh, candles, air fresheners, detergents, but all we do is the odor. So we don't do any finished products. That's none of the stuff that we do, right? So I like to be in the hiring process of all the people that we bring in, just so I kind of know where you're coming from, your background, if you're a good fit for that department. So right. that's usually where I get involved in it. Okay. Okay. So the position that you're applying for is lab tech. So it's actually making the samples in our sample lab, um, which is the, the, the sample that the customer gets if they go, this is great, or I need you guys to modify it sweeter, stronger, whatever. And then you get another formulation, you would compound it again, and then it would go into our library. So you make the sample before we actually make it in production. Okay. So just, just that's, you make the small one before the big one's made. Okay. And that's it. Okay, so now let's go into your background. So uh, first off, I look at your address, right? Uh, well, the first step is actually your name. So I got Mohammed Kareem. Yes, sir. But what do you actually go by? I go by Farhan, because that's my middle name, yes, sir. Okay, because literally everybody told me Farhan, and yeah. then when I got your application, I was like, okay, wait a minute, what type of stuff do you got going on here? Because yes, like sorry, Hans man. has his own, so. Yeah, we're all Mohammeds, man. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Farhan. Yes, sir. I can remember that. All right, so you got a Cartersville address. Yes, sir. So does that mean you born and raised in Cartersville? Your family's lived here? How so, long have you been in Cartersville? So I was born in uh, Bangladesh, in okay. Dhaka. It's right next to India. Yep. And I moved here when I was a couple months old, and I lived in Miami until, like, age five, and I moved to Cartersville. So from age five on, I've yep. been in Cartersville. So I went to Cartersville High School and graduated here. I grew up here, basically. And okay. then my address, I live, like, two minutes down the road. Like, yeah. literally, you take a left, and my house is there. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Yes, sir. All right. So, you're close. No issue, no problem. Um, experience side, like, no one really has any experience in our industry. Like, mm -hmm. the closest thing we get to this is, like, uh, CVS, Walgreens, techs uh, mm -hmm. who work in the pharmacy, stuff like that. Like, that's the only type of experience that kind of lays over into the stuff that we're doing when we look at resumes. Right. Um, so, your background is uh, academy sports. Mm hmm and then after there, you were at Subway. Yes, sir. Uh, sandwich Artiste? Something like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Academy, you were there a year, roughly. Mm -hmm. um, why did you start there, and why did you leave? Uh, so actually, I started there because uh, at Subway, I worked for my parents because they owned the store. So, so they couldn't fire you, like that's your kid. I mean, no, they can fire me. I mean, they would fire me. Yeah. That's the thing. They would fire me, but I just I just want to do my own thing and okay. not rely on them and actually get out and have, like, actual experience. Because working for my parents, it's not – like, I have leeway, mm -hmm. so I can slack a little bit. So I wanted to get into an actual job where people weren't afraid to tell me, like, when I was wrong. Real 8 to doing, 5, yeah, right, real right. lunches. So that's yep. why I got started at Academy. And, uh yeah, it was a, it was it was a good experience. It helped me for sure because I had no experience like actually working for people besides yeah. my parents. So like what their requirements were, right, and structure, right. and that whole nine. Mm -hmm. um, usually, I get nervous if I get people one fresh out of college mm -hmm. or two fresh out of high school, right? Because they really don't understand schedules and requirements and people relying on you to get stuff done. Because teachers, yeah, they're a little. You could turn that in tomorrow. Yeah, instead of getting an A, we're going to bump it to a B because it was late. Like, they've really turned into this wussification yeah, yeah. Of, of students. Right. So I really like to be the second or third job just because, you know, the first job you were canned right off the bat just mm -hmm. because you weren't doing what you were supposed to be doing. Right. Right. Like, you really had to learn. Mm -hmm. The second job, you start to get a little bit better. But you look at some resumes, and it's like a month at this job, a month at this job, mm -hmm. two months at this job, mm -hmm. and you're going... Okay, they showed up late. They got fired. They did this. They got fired. Right. You know, did the, so your resume didn't have that. You had. I graduated high school. I've had two jobs. Both of them were decent length employment. Mm -hmm. So you had to be doing okay. Yes, so sir. to me, that looked good. All right. So now that I kind of have your background and your family, Subway, 
uh, which that's kind of cool because a lot of people don't have that. So that that's kind of neat. So you have some brothers and sisters that are uh, still working there, or like what's your yeah? Scenario? It's a family business, so they kind of throw us into it like without our will. Yeah, yeah, from a very young age. So yeah, we're forced to work there, but not forced at the same time. Yeah, if anybody's asking. <laughs> <laughs> So literally, um, both of my kids, mm-hmm. um, I literally did not want to come straight to work here. Right. Like I made both of them go get other jobs and like reach out to the world because I didn't want them to be like, oh, you forced me to do the family business and I could have done so much better and you, you killed my hopes and aspirations right. and, and I didn't want to deal with any of that. Okay. So I was like, you go get some jobs mm-hmm. and then whenever you, you tell them you're going to succeed or you're going to come back and say, hey, I'd rather work for you. Okay. Um, and, uh, two of them actually worked for me, which has been great. And they've come in and filled some gaps. So for me, it's been wonderful. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, good on your SAT, uh, KSU, you're going for a bachelor's degree in biomedical engineering. Um, what type of, are you doing like online courses? Are you doing, so, uh, Right now, I'm not sure how they're going to, like, bring the classes back in the fall yep. and stuff. So they might have us do online. But I'm sure they'll have, like, in-class, too. So the last semester I did, I did online part-time. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I've been on recently, just online part-time. Okay. Yes, sir. I got you. And what is your what is your long-term plan on that? So actually, I'm not even sure I, I'm going to continue with the biomedical engineering. I yep. have that right now. But my main goal is exercise science or something in nutrition. Yep. And then using that to get like my PT career started, my nutritionist career started in the long run. So you want to do like uh, physical trainer, right. physical therapy, like that type like of physical thing? physical training and nutritionist and stuff. So okay. uh, help people in both ways so I can help them in the gym and also help them with their eating. Because in that field, nutrition is way more important than anything you do physically. So help them that way as well. So this is why you... You're buff. No, you're into that. No, man, I'm on steroids. <laughs> I'm, I'm not on steroids. Uh, okay, yeah, okay. It's a, it's so we're, an obsession. So we're gonna watch you swell and then just shrink in like a month. Yeah, I think I'm gonna shrink pretty soon. So we'll yeah. see. We'll see. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, okay, so you got some volunteerism. That's good. Get back to the community, doing some things. Uh, yeah. You listed a couple hobbies. You're into sports, uh, traveling, that type of thing. Okay. I mean, to me, uh, you're. You're younger, right? You graduated. You're still kind of trying to find a direction. You do have an interest into a certain field. Mm -hmm. Usually what I'm looking for is some sort of field that kind of lines up with fragrance, whether you're in like chemistry or or that type of thing. Right. Um, But what I found out over the years is honestly, what you think you're going to do when you grow up usually is is not where you're going to be, right? right? So as you start going through life, you find some things that show an interest. You start working at a job. You start making more money. uh, You meet a girl. You know, you have a couple kids. Life changes. You start making 40, 50 grand a year, and you're going, you know what? I'm actually pretty good, right? right? right. Or some people decide, oh, I'm going to go to college. I want to make 200 grand. They get halfway through school, and they go, this is horrible. I'm stressed. I hate what I'm doing. Why would I want to do this the rest of my life? Mm -hmm. Um, so you're still young, you're still figuring it out, got plenty of time. Yeah, we'll see, right? we'll see what happens. So, uh, solid. Um, next thing would probably be uh, if you had any type of record or any background issues. Um, usually that comes up when we screen you anyways. Right. So usually we'll ask, hey, is there anything on your record? And then you respond. Uh, maybe like a couple of speeding tickets, but that's it. Okay, yeah, yeah I don't care about any of that. Yeah, yeah, usually I'm good. it's... Uh, I'm, good. I'm clean. Uh, I do have this one felony, nah. uh, but it wasn't it wasn't what it looked like. And you're like, oh, hold on, let me. <laughs> right, 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 right. No, I'm completely uh, clean, man. Okay, solid. Um, to me, looking at this, uh, Justin is the actual uh, manager that would make the final decision. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's already talked to you um, a little bit, kind of going over the job, what it requires, mm-hmm. that type of thing. Um, so the, the basic principle of what you're doing is you have a formula or a batch ticket, mm-hmm. right? That batch ticket has all the raw materials on it with a code number and an amount. So you take a beaker over to a scale, you have a formula, you have all the raw materials in front of you, which is in alphabetical order. Mm-hmm. And if it says put five grams of uh, patchouli in there, you grab patchouli, you put five grams in there, you check it off and you go to the next one. Right. Biggest thing is accuracy. 
because whatever you put in that beaker is exactly what they're going to do in production at a larger scale. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that those match. So we literally grab the oil that you made, compare it to what production made in 25 pounds or 400 pounds, and then we run them on machines that tell us, is it the same? Right. So if you did everything right and the production compounder did everything right, it comes back perfect. Okay. If it comes up different, it means one of you two screwed up. So it's either the lab tech screwed up or the production guy screwed up. And then we load it on our GC mass spec, which is gas chromatography, and it will actually tell us what ingredients are off to what percentages. And that's how we can find out that there's a problem. That literally happens almost never, right? Because uh, when you guys get done with your beaker, we weigh it to make sure that the amount that you put in there is what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And then a guy comes behind it and smells it and compares it to the prior lot. Okay. So that's how like our internal QC works. But then um, we bottle that up, send it to customers all over the world and country. And that's when they decide to buy. That's when the production side cuts on. Okay. So you guys do all the experimentals in our library creations and they just do the large side. So it's, it's the introduction into the fragrance industry. Literally, you come in as a lab tech or you come in in production as a forklift driver. Like that's the two main entry points into the industry. Okay. So uh, to me, I think you're our guy. Okay. Man, I like you, man. All right, you're then? a great guy, yeah. man. So what do you think? Is he our guy? Yeah, he's our guy. Man. Farhan looks like our new lab tech. So uh, as samples are going out, they're going to be coming from this guy. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Congratulations. Yeah, thank Welcome you to so AFI. much, man. Thank you. Yep.